Hello, everybody. Welcome to Echo Underground. I'm Shanique. This is Mike. And on this podcast, we talk about music, movies, TV shows, and any other interesting topics. Today's episode is going to be about the new Kelly Clarkson album called Meaning of Life. Now, before we get this podcast started, I want you guys to tweet us or leave comments on any of our social media sites about what do you think the best TV show, music, album, or movie of 2017 is. All three. You can answer all three as well. We just want to hear from you guys. Now, what did I think of this album? I would give this album a solid A. There is not one song I didn't like. Even when she slowed it down, I was still feeling it. It's a really good album. Um, It had a lot of R&B influence. There's some pop in there. And that's basically, essentially, it's kind of like a contemporary R&B or pop with R&B influence, whatever you want to call it. It's really feel good. And I I truly enjoyed the album. I have no complaints. I'd say buy it. Like, this is a good album I heard. I think it's her eighth studio album. So, good job, Kelly Carson. What do you think of this album, Michael? I think it's an A+. Plus. Oh, I... <laughs> I am pathetically in love with my top three, so I have no reason but not to. And like I think, every, like you said, I can't. I don't want to go go ahead and repeat everything, but everything all the way through was like perfect. There's never a dull moment. It, or even like the two slower songs that were on the album were not distracting at all. She sounded good on everything. And one thing I would say though is that on this album, she sounded like she was just having a lot of fun. Like every, every, all the songs were just hella fun, minus like maybe the two like slower ones. But even still, like, they were just, the album is a fun album. And it's weird to describe an album like that. Because, like, the girl's talented. And, like, she's going up, there's, like, um, a portion of the album where, like, she's going, like, a more pop route. And, like, you feel it, yo. And I was just like, yo, Kel- Kelly, not really, like, um that kind of fan for you. But, like, I might be now after all this for real. So, you know, yeah, I dig it. Good album. Yeah, I- I've been a Kelly Clarkson fan for a long time. I didn't like like maybe her last two albums, but all the ones before then, I was I was feeling it. Um, so let's get into our top threes. Number three, I already know. Whole lot of woman. Now, oh boy, this song like I'm probably gonna be saying this a lot. This song has a whole lot of attitude, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's a very fun song. Um, she even quotes Ice Cube in there. When she said, go go to church, she quoted a lyric from Go to Church, and I love that. That made me laugh so hard. Um, I wrote in my notes, Kelly's letting these bitches know she's a strong, badass chick with confidence. And that's literally what she says in the song. And I love the chorus. The chorus is really interesting to me because it's kind of like rap singing. Like, she'll hit a note, she goes, ah, and then the background singer go, this and this and this. And it's, like, very consistent and... It catches your attention. And it's just a funky ass song. And I truly enjoyed this song. So yeah. Number three. Um, do you have anything to say about a whole lot of women? Um, in my notes I had. Shanique is going to have this in the top three somewhere. Yes. I don't know if it's going to be number one. <laughs> number two or number three. But Shanique is going to like it. I remember there was a song similar to this on Pink's album. And like it was on Shanique's top three. I'm like anything like you know. Which is very good. Like a. Like a you know, f- female positive pro, you know, woman type of song. Like, you know, just get some confidence into your system for all females, yo. She is going to have it. She's going to represent this arm real hard. But, like, all things for real, yo, this song was kind of dope. This is one of the reasons um, I actually figured that this album was just hella fun. Because the song is also fun. Like, sure, she's laying it down telling everyone that, you know, woman is like, you know, this girl is a whole lot of woman going on. It's like, yeah, this, this girl is like just... Not only saying something good, but letting, making sure that she's having fun, like performing wherever she's doing it. Like even in the album, even in the studio, I can just imagine her dancing while she's doing it. So yeah, hella good song. Okay, what's your number three? Oh boy, I can really just put my number three in any order, and I'll be fine to be honest. Hmm, but which one? I'll go with "Love So Soft" to be honest. Love So Soft. <laughs> yeah, because it's weird. Um, I. This was like the first like few songs on this album, even the intro were like super hella dope, yo. Like she started off the she started one thing I would say, this album started had one of the strongest starts of everything we've done on this podcast. Yeah. Like definitely. 
I felt this was like the best part of a roller coaster all the way through. And Love So Soft was um, it was a cool song too. Um, I can see why any song on this album could be like a radio hit, but this one is like you know for some reason it just struck me. Can't really tell you why, but it did. My other two I have um, better reasons for, but this one is definitely my, my number three because like I have the least to say about it as far as figuring out exactly why I like it so much other than it resonates hella hard. But yeah, hella cool song. And this this is one of her singles, right? Yeah, I think it was her lead single. Okay, lead single. Okay, well, that explains why I like it so much then. All right. My number two is actually Love So Soft. Um, ah. I love the R&B on it. Like, I really do. Especially, like, on the chorus where she goes, dun, 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 dun. And, like, the way she's singing that, it's it's simple, but the way she's singing ma- makes it sound, like, extra special. Um, Again, I love the vibe of the song as well. And one thing I will say about this album, the background singers, though, they were putting in work Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) on every song. They were putting in work, especially this one. And then she has this high note at the end that I was feeling from, like, the depths of my soul. I was feeling that shit. Yep. And um, there's a part at the end where she does, like, a little breakdown of the chorus. Mm -hmm. And she kind of does that in a normal chorus anyway. But it's really cool because I think they like take the beat off a little bit and you can hear it, her voice even more. So yeah, I love that part as well. I was jamming to that shit. But yeah. Uh, what is your number two? My number two is actually going to go to one of the slower ones. Like, uh, slower but not a slow song. It's going to go to... Oh yeah, that was like, that, that was going to be my honorable mention. That's kind of creepy. This is a cool song, yo. Like, um... The, the chorus is definitely my favorite part here, and even though it's like one of the, the slower, slower tempoed songs, it's hella cool for the chorus alone. Cause she's not necessarily like belting any notes on this. But for some reason, whenever she said the word "cruel," like she's emphasizing that word, and that, that alone is like you know, sends shocks through me for some reason. And I thought that was hella cool. Um, it's definitely like about like a role reversal, role reversal type thing. Like you know, you do this, but I wouldn't do that to you, or something like that. And I was like, you know, that's. A very little interesting topic she got going on, and there's like toward the end of the song, there's like a, there's like a little dip in the song, like where like the um the the sound sort of goes away and like rebuilds itself into something else. It's pretty good and had like a really cool sound to it, and like, you know, just one of them parts of the one what I said earlier was like you know this part of roller coaster rider just never got boring. So yeah, number two goes to cruel. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm gonna talk about cruel a little bit. It was, I should say. It was smooth as fuck. I don't know. The way she was singing that, it was so chill. And I like, again, I love the feel of the song. And basically the song is basically like, she's talking to some guys telling them, don't break my heart. Don't be so cruel. I would never mm-hmm. do the things that you were, that you could probably do to me and stuff like that. Whoever this mm-hmm. guy she's talking to sounds like a piece of shit. But on a more positive seeing, seeing note. a pattern here. <laughs> <laughs> on a more positive note. Um, she sounds amazing on it, and like I said, her vocals weren't, you know, you know, mind blowing because it wasn't that type of song. And she, but the way she sang it, cool as fuck. And the background singers again putting in work mm-hmm. on this record. So, what do you think my number one is? I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna. Normally what I do is I, I guess num- my, my number one is yours, but I'm actually going to give it to, I thought it was going to be a whole lot of women, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, is it Heat? Yeah, good guess. Oh, wow. I got your number one. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I like that. All right. Um, Heat for me was a good combination of pop and R&B. It was catchy. Amazing beat. Whoever produced that beat, Good shit on me. Um, I love the chorus and the vocals were on point and I thought the beat was very great. Cre- it was actually insane. And once again, those background singers, whoever you are, you put in work. I hope you got really paid really well for this album. <laughs> yeah, word. I I actually very much agree with that too. Um, what do you think about Heat? Unless that's your number one too. Um, no, it's not my number one. But like it, it this. After I heard the song is where I realized that Kelly was definitely putting a lot of her best hits early, which is a weird like tactic to do for an album. But I guess you don't have to worry about that when all your songs are good. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I thought that was a pretty good um idea on her side. Very catchy song. 
it got stuck in my head. Like, um, there's a point where I had to, like, pause the, um, my album run through on this song specifically because it was still stuck in my head. So, yeah, this song was heck of fun. Okay, cool. All right, let me guess your number one. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm torn between. Just guess one. Just get one. No, don't say them both. Just guess one. I'm torn because I think it's a slower song. But, uh, all right. I'm going to take a risk and say medicine. Oh, so good, though. No, that's not it, actually. <laughs> that's a very good one, though. I actually really like medicine, too. That's a catchy song. But I'll get to that when I get around to it. My number one, actually, is, I think for the first time on this podcast, probably, maybe not, but the cover song for the album, Meaning of Life. You did that on, oh, yeah. Okay. Which, which other one did I do for? I probably did. I just can't remember. I mean, you've had a cover, like the title song in your top three before. Yeah, I just don't just know if not, I had it. It's not a m- one number one. You're right about right. that. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, for Meaning of Life, I thought that there was an interesting amount of power that she put behind her voice while still trying to, like, you know, balance out the kind of fun music that she has going on to, like, counter it, you know? And this chorus was probably, of all the courses, all the catchy courses on this album. Heck, even all the verses on this album, I felt like this one was the um, the the one that was like Michael's meaning of life, life. I'm sorry, I'm listening to it right now as well. But yeah, it's, it's really annoyingly addictive for me right now because this is the one that I like when I went through my again because I I ran through this twice just because it was that damn good. Meaning of life was the one that I had on repeat for a part of my drive to work, so I was I was ready on this song, yo. Meaning of Life cover song on the album. Tell me if you agree. The <laughs> Meaning of Life. <laughs> um, yeah. Meaning of Life had a very good R&B influence as well. Um, little Star Wars reference. I said the R&B is strong with this one. Um, <laughs> and it was catchy as hell. Probably at like at the first few songs, probably her strongest vocal performance on uh, in the beginning of the album. Yeah. And then I like how the ending she took like the beat off a little bit and she really showcases her voice. I was like, damn, the note she was hitting was really on point. Um, Word. And whoever this guy is, he must be the bomb because she was like, when you kiss me, I know who I am. You know how good someone has to be that they can kiss you and they just they tell you to cured meet them your like... amnesia. <laughs> they just cured your whole amnesia. Now you know who you are. You remember? You're right. I did that. I know that. what the meaning of life is, bro. Because <laughs> I kissed That's you. Real. Hey, at least one of these songs, the guy was nice. <laughs> True. Well, uh, you know, these, these albums, they be saying, talking more shit about us niggas, but whatever. You know what? <laughs> he and his feelings. All right, um, let's start at the beginning. A minute. Now, I didn't count this in, like, uh, my, like, choices for, like, songs, because I don't consider this a song, but I wish it was one. I really mm-hmm. do wish it was a song. It was a perfect intro, and just like the title said, it's literally a minute, and Kelly voice, so much soul in her voice on this little snippet. So, yeah, I really liked it. What do you think of A Minute? I was just majority impressed about how much quality she could put in a one minute of a song, you know? Because, like, the beat going into this was hecka cool. But, like, I think um this one also had, like, a little bit of um, R&B tinge in it as well. And that's what got me so curious about this song. Because I'm like, is this the rest of the album? Which it kind of was. And, like, this is an album that didn't lie to me. And as far as intros go, I'm glad it didn't. Because a, a, a lot of shame. intros do that. Listen, I'm not, I'm not saying no spe- uh, specific names, but listen, it's happened before on this podcast, all right? So, yeah, I feel like Kelly did me justice with this one, man. It only took a minute for her to convince me to go through the rest of the album with a smile on my face, and I did. So, yeah, a minute. <laughs> Next one, Move You. Now, for me, the beginning of the song, she sounded a little bit like Pink. Like, um, on the What About Us, like the beginning, it sounded a little bit like Pink. And then... It was slower than, like, the previous, because you had, like, Meaning of Life, Love So Soft. Mm-hmm. And then, but it was still really good. 
And then I like the choir that came in towards like the middle, towards the end, like at the around the two minute mark. And then she switched it up with a little bit of acapella. And then she held like this long ass note at the end. And I was like, girl, uh-huh. we know you can Do sing. It. We know Do you it. can sing. <laughs> but yeah, I really did enjoy the track. What do you think of Move? You. Um, One thing about the song is she sounds hella smooth. And I do agree with um the background singers here, accentuating her. Because there's parts of the song where I thought the background singers, and even Kelly herself and the music on behind it, were going for more of a, not even just gospel, sorry, not even just R&B, but like actual gospel type of sound, yeah. which it kind of was to me. And I thought, like, you know, Kelly Clarkson can definitely pull that off. I'm pretty sure she has before. And, like, she's definitely, not only on the song, but this entire album, working on all her strengths and, like, just throwing it out there. So, yeah, movie was definitely dope for me as well, too. All right, next up, Medicine. All right, mm-hmm. Medicine, another R&B influence track. It was catchy. It's really just a fun s- song, even though this dude that she's talking about is just an asshole. <laughs> and mm-hmm. also during the song, she does this like little sing rap, sing rap thing, and her vocals sound really good. So yeah, I enjoy Medicine, and it was close, but there was other songs I liked a little bit more. What do you think of Medicine? Oh man, medicine is another one of them fun ones. Like I'm, I'm still on the fun train with this one. I think the only one that like, you know, took away from the the heightened tempo of the entire album overall was Move You at this point. But like this one, like brought you all the way back up, and it was hecka cool. I, I agree. The guy in here, not you know, doing us bros no justice here, but you know, it's whatever. Kelly's putting it out there and made made a good song out of it. So I guess something good came out of it, you know. So yeah, medicine was another good one, and it's a very good guess of my number one as well. Cause this wasn't my consideration for a while, to at least to at least be my top three. Not for my number one, but at least my top three. I already knew my number one to do them when I heard all meaning of life. It never came back to that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, next one, didn't I? This one actually to me sounded the most different on the album, besides like you know when we get to like the ballads and stuff. Um, but she had a lot of attitude in this song. Basically saying, like, didn't I tell you <laughs> type of song. Mm-hmm. And she was, again, it's another catchy one. It's definitely a little, it's definitely upbeat. And it's, it has like this funky beat to it. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Um, keep talking while I answer the door. <laughs> okay, but yeah, didn't I? I thought Shanique is probably right about calling it funky. Because I'm I'm trying to figure out what actual instrument it was that was going on between mostly that the album and anything else, but it was hella cool because it felt like kind of jazzy at the same time, but kind of like old school, like a little bit of soul going on there. Like you know, Kelly can do a lot with her range as far as her genre that she can pull off, and I felt like this one was really cool. Like she did a great job with it. Another thing too is um even though like didn't I came up a lot like a lot of times I complain on um, the podcast that like um when I hear the same thing over and over again on a chorus or in a, in a verse, it can be annoying, but this one was actually like tasteful and I'm listening to it now. And it's like already still stuck in my head too. Like that's one really good factor about Kelly and this entire album did not give you everything. Baby, baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm listening to the songs while we're doing the podcast. I'm, I'm glad you she can't hear anything, but yeah, it's like, uh, everything here, everything on this album is a drug, man. I can't take it. All right, next one. Would you call that love? Now, this one is more on the. It's upbeat, but not really. This is probably the most pop song on the entire album. It's basically a song to her ex. It's really catchy, and basically saying, you know, was it worth it? At the end of the day, and the beat is like really like really good and again the dude is trash apparently <laughs> but i really did enjoy this album i mean well yeah the album and the song what do you think of would you call that love i mean yeah would, would you call that love it's kind of like in the weird gray area between like up tempo and like just slow with the rest of the album so it's not necessarily slow you know especially not like movie or, or um, one more that's coming up but i thought it was cool too because um it's like just saying, hey, did your ex really put all of their effort into, like, you know, the relationship? Or, like, would they really say that they can call that love? It's in the it's in the title. You can't really miss it. Kelly sounds good on it. 
good range. Everything's great. <laughs> Another song that I loved. Also a good contender for I didn't I know I didn't have any um honorable mentions, but if I did remember to do it, then this would have been up there somewhere. Okay. Cool. Uh next one. I don't think about you. This is the first ballet on the entire album. Mm-hmm. It's a very beautiful song. Like I don't have anything really to say about it. So it's like it's really beautiful. Um I love how she sounds on there and besides another song on this album this is probably the best she sounds vocally which honestly she sounds amazing on all of it so there's no shade at all um and the song's basically about moving forward she's like i don't want to have to think about you when i live my life i'm just not gonna think about you anymore and that's a good, a good message you know leave 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 trash ass niggas in the past i know the niggas well, what, here's I'm gonna break it down. <laughs> Shanique, hold up. When Shanique says niggas on this podcast, I just mean dudes in general. I'm not putting a race on there. Now we're cleared up. Go, Michael. What do you think of this? <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. What um I don't think about you. I kind of expected like you know going to the album. I realized all right, we're in like the last half here, pretty much. And I was thinking to myself, it's got to be in a moment before, it's going to be sooner or later before another um, like slower song comes on. Especially one where like she actually shows off more her voice, you know, starts belting out them notes, you know. And like, belting out them she, wasn't, she, was, she, she wasn't, she wasn't like going full blown like um, Sam Smith or nothing like that. Like we did on other podcasts recently. Check that one out. Hey. But like, I, I feel like this is as close as she came with it because it was, she went for more catchy and like Less like you know, trying to get that thunder out of her lungs, cause it's, it, it worked out being just fine. Sometimes less is more, and uh, this is the proof of that. Um, proof of that point. No, no, no. Go ahead, Shanique, before I keep singing. Hey, do you want a performance by Michael Brown? No, I'm <laughs> nobody wants a performance by Michael Brown. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next song. Slow dance. Hey, slow dance. This was a beautiful song too, and this is when I'm like, okay, we have the slow part of the album. I'll be right back with you. Go ahead. And now we're in a for a commercial break, apparently. No, but getting back to what I was saying, slow dance was the slower part. Like we're at the end, so the songs got real slow, and it was a very simple beat. It was simple, but it gave you a lot because it let her voice truly shine. And oddly, it was a sweet song. You know, she's basically like saying, hey, screw like doing all this other stuff. Just hold me. Hold me in your arms. And I think that's really sweet. It's not where I thought the song was going. I thought she'd be talking about something else a little bit. But I did like the overall message of the song. I like how she sound on the record. And I like simply just how everything came together. From the beat to the vocals to the arrangement, it was on point for slow dance. Slow dance. Sorry, letting that go. All I know is that Kelly Carson album is a strong contender for my top five of 2017 for the album. I think it's a very strong contender. This is a this is an album that I enjoy from start to finish, and hope you guys agree if not i'm all about hearing contrasting views it's all fine with me okay i apologize where are we um is what do you think of slow dance ah slow dance okay I apologize, everyone. I just can't sit still doing the <laughs> freaking podcast over Skype, folks. It's not even like it's technical difficulties. But slow dance, um, I f- have, hmm, nah, I'm going to be too nosy. But like, let's say that you have like a playlist for like some of the smoothest songs that you want to like, you know, woo somebody with, whether you're a guy or a girl. I put in my notes that this is the song you want to have on that album, on, on that playlist. Because this is, 
the way she sounds is kind of seductive. And it's like, it's a very like intimate song, the way that she's singing it. Like if you guys um, listen to the Demi Lovato podcast, I said this, um, something similar about um, Concentrate and Ruin the Friendship on her um, album. And I'm getting the same vibes out of this. Different song, but same vibes, you know, but like, I really like this song. Like One of the slower ones, definitely way a little more R&B. And I think she nailed it right here as far as, you know, trying to be, you know, the kind of song where make it make it be the kind of song where like you know you got some candle candle lights and you know rose petals on the bed and all that other corny jazz. This is the one you want for it, Joe. Let me tell you that right now. Okay. <laughs> all right, next one, which is "Don't You Pretend." Mm-hmm. Now, for "Don't You Pretend," her voice sounds fucking amazing. That's really, and this is a song where I really feel her voice was the focal point. Not, not the, because she used like an old school, I want to say like Motown beat where it's very simple. It's like a whistle or something. You really heard her voice. And it's a, you know, it's a love song. It's basically like, don't pretend you don't love me. Don't pretend you don't feel what's happening between us. You ain't got to lie. You ain't got to lie, Craig. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, Craig wasn't lying. But, <laughs> um, and it's a very strong ballad and I did like it. And. Like I said, on for slow dance, we're in the slow part of the album. It doesn't end on a slow song, but this is, but this is a really good song, and I liked it, and it was close to being in my top three. What do you think of "Don't You Pretend"? Um, I the chorus is what like, drove me to this uh, um the most because don't get me wrong, like um the verses like she was already trying to be powerful, but trying to be smooth at the same time. Like, she also, like, what Shanice said, like, she makes it, like, a kind of old-school type of sound with it, with what she's doing, right, um, with this. And I thought she did it pretty well. Like, she was trying to, like, teeter a pretty gray line between them both, but it worked. Like, you could tell all the instruments were in the background. There's a part of the song, too, where, like, the beat was just simple, so it can, like, accentuate her voice, which I thought was, like, a genius idea, because that's kind of what she wanted to do with Clarice Clarkson. She's kind of proven herself since, like, what, 05 or something like that, probably earlier. Yeah. So yeah, I thought that was a genius move on their part to do that. This sounded good all the way through. All right, uh, final song of the album, "Go High," and mm-hmm. funny, it's a song about taking the high road. She's like, "Oh, I always take the high road, but you, you bum ass person, always take the low road." And I thought it was very unique because it sounded the most different. Though her arrangement was really crazy on it. Honestly, mm-hmm. I would have ended the album with "Don't You Pretend." I would have put Go High before Don't You Pretend, but this still is a really good song. I have no hate towards the song at all. Um, Sorry about the noise in the background. It was catchy, and I love the notes that she was hitting at the end of the track. I was like, bruh. And then she did this little, like, breakdown at the end where she, like, slowed down the chords and she was singing each thing, and I love that. And again, I thought this sounded probably the most unique track on the album. What do you think of Go I? Um, there are parts in the chorus where I thought like um I thought it was interesting that they chose to like, you know, go like a more um like edited voice route for like the go high. I thought that was kinda cool too, like it didn't ruin anything. They didn't like overuse it. It's only like here and there. But I thought it was cool because it kinda blended like a whole different bunch of different sound like um Shanique said. Hey, like, can you hit the, that note again? I promise you I will not. No. <laughs> I won't even attempt to lie to myself. You ain't got to lie, Mike. You ain't got to lie. You can't Why do it. Why the fuck you lying? <laughs> All right, we're getting a performance from Shanique instead. But yeah, we, we can hear Shanique go high on these notes. Ah, that's what I did there. But yeah, um, I like Rain. what Shanique said about the... <laughs> I like what Shanique said about the last last part of the song, too. Where, like, they took some of the arrangement out and um, they chose to... um. Just make it sound like, I don't know what the word is for this. Like, it's not electronic and it's not necessarily funk. It's like a hybrid of a whole bunch of things going on for a second. But, like, she needed to definitely rap about what they um, accentuated their, um, her voice. I also had that in my notes as well. And I think even though it's not the ideal best song, it's still a really good best song. Um, sorry, not best song. A, ideal last song. It's still a really good last song. Because I, I actually yeah, agree with Shanique agree. about putting um, Don't You Pretend very, um, at the very last one. But you know what? They she wanted to end it um as the way it started, like you know, just everything was on a high note, which is kind of kind of productive to me because I always said that the faster paced ones are ones I want um last, 
but this one I actually want. Don't you pretend? So it's it's whatever. Sometimes I'm wrong. I'm not always right, guys. Give me a break. I think for like albums, the way to end albums, it depends on the feel of your album. Like if your album is more on a low key type of thing, or if you're trying to do like a roller coaster, it might be better to end on like a slower song versus a fast paced song. Or if you're just trying to climax to the end and then just say, oh, over, then it might be better in on a fast pace. I just think it's how you arrange your album and what you're trying to go for. I don't think there's a consistent way to end an album, per se. But, I said, actually, I take that back. There's only one consistent way to end an album on a good fucking song. Whether it's slow or Very not. True. <laughs> All Very right. true. Yeah, so I'm going to give my closing remarks. Overall, I say this is a buy it, download it, support the artists. It was a really good album. There is nothing, there's not, she showed range on this album, it was creative, it was fun, I think you just, it's an album you can just rock, jam out to, and not give a shit, and then if you want to hear her voice, and you can listen to like, Don't Pretend, or Slow Dance, or even her faster paced song, she's hitting notes, low key in the background, so I think you enjoy it, no matter what version of Kelly Clarkson you like, because you know, some people mm-hmm. like her, send your bag on! you know fade yeah right and then some right, people right. like her miss independent like the more r&b pop face whole, whole lot of woman face yep the one <laughs> whole lot of woman yo and um it i think you get a mix of kind of like a little you get a, a hybrid you know and one thing i'll say after all these years she still sounds amazing good job kelly your closing remarks i thought kelly clarkson is very good with the entire range that she's been dealt with. Like she's got like the R and B here, a little bit of gospel in there, a little bit of pop in there, and a couple of like hybrid weird genres going on. I thought she did great with all of those. I thought she did great with all those in just thirteen songs, which is a very responsible thing to do. Only it's have 14, thirteen songs yes. on your album. I think that's very responsible because why would someone want to have like you know I don't know let me just throw a random number out there forty five songs on the album. Stop shading Chris Brown. He wanted us to give he wanted to give us a lot of music. All right. Hey, hey, hey. it better be. You haven't even listened to it yet, so calm down. (laughs) You right, you right. Just gotta get it off my chest, man. But yeah, that's my end closing remarks. More of it was about Chris Brown, but you get the idea. Get the idea. (laughs) The idea is that we both love it. Anyway. Let us know what you guys think. Did you love this album? Were we bugging? Were we? Um, let us know what your favorite songs. I saw that some people on YouTube were doing that, and I enjoyed reading it. Sometimes they match with ours, and sometimes we get some surprises on there. Um, you can leave comments on YouTube, you know, as well as iTunes, Facebook, and all other podcasting apps. And all of them are under Echo Underground Podcast. You could tweet us comments as well at Echo U Podcast. And you could follow and subscribe on many, on our many, many social media sites. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye. See you.